Hello. Thank you for taking the time to listen to what I have to share with you today. I want you to know how grateful I am for you, how the way you've soldiered through all of this. You guys have been absolutely great. You've been prayerful. You've been understanding. You've been supportive and encouraging. In fact, I don't think that you as a church family could have dealt with this any better than what you have. Continue praying for our nation and praying for our state, praying for our city. Particularly, pray for those who are ill because of COVID-19. We also know that many people are being affected economically by all of this too. Let us know how we might help. It's an understatement to say that things have been very different the last several weeks. Thankfully, it appears as if things are changing and moving in a very positive direction. Let me share just a brief update about where we are as a church family and more of what we'll be doing moving forward. This is all very important information as far as the opportunity we have to begin public worship together again. I want you to know that I've given considerable thought to all of what I'm going to share. My main goal is to do all that we can to keep everyone healthy and safe while at the same time allowing us to begin worshiping together again. We've not cut any corners, nor will we, related to what county officials, state officials, federal officials, or medical experts would be asking us to do. We're following social distancing guidelines, and as of Monday, the rest of our staff is back in the office during regular office hours. At this point, we're planning to begin offering public worship on Sunday, May 10th, the state of Missouri, as you likely know, is reopening on May 4th, so that gives almost a full week of the state being opened before we gather for public worship. We think this allows some time for many people to ease back into much of life as they've known it. For morning worship, we're inviting people to attend based on the first letter of their last name. This gives us the chance to divide the groups so that they potentially would be somewhat equally dispersed. For the record, we won't turn away anyone who attends a service other than the one that corresponds to their name, but I'm sure you understand the need for such scheduling. This will be shared via email with our church family and on our website and our Facebook page as well. For now, this is our schedule beginning May 10th. Please note the time changes to accommodate more worship hours. At 8 o'clock, we will welcome those who are at higher risk, including the elderly, those who are immunocompromised, and those with underlying health conditions. At 9.30, those whose last names begin with the letters A through G. At 11 o'clock, those whose last names begin with the letter H through N. And then at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, those whose last name begins with the letters O through Z. For those of you who are not yet comfortable returning to public worship, we totally understand. We will be live streaming our 11 o'clock morning worship service. The services themselves will be planned to last about 45 minutes, giving us 45 minutes to get the people to exit, which we will dismiss people in an orderly fashion by sections and ask them if they're going to visit to please do so in the parking lot. We will clean the main surfaces between each service and get the next group in and ready for worship. The point is each group has ample time to come and go without close interaction with the other groups. We will not be offering nursery or children's church for any of the services for at least a while. At the beginning of worship, we will remind everyone not to shake hands or to hug for the safety and well-being of everybody at this point. And of course, we'll also remind them that it won't always be this way. When you get to the church building, we're asking that you make your way into the worship center and find a place to be seated. Seating will probably take just a little longer than usual. We'll be asking families to sit together and ask others to maintain proper social distancing. Doors will likely be kept open in order to facilitate greater airflow. Our people have been wonderful in terms of giving, and we will continue to encourage giving online, but we'll also have ushers available at the doors for those who would like to give their offering at the conclusion of worship, but we won't be passing any offering plates. If and when we do communion, we will be using the single communion units that contain both the wafer and the juice. Think pop top, if you will. It's not ideal, but it allows for communion without having to pass any trays. Platform personnel will practice social distancing as well, and that's going to look a little different to you compared to what it normally does when we gather for worship. Microphones won't be passed, and we'll clean those between each service as well. We'll not be having choir for the time being either. 
Obviously, I'll still be preaching from the Bible and sharing the gospel and inviting people to surrender to Christ, but I won't be inviting people to the front during a public invitation. Pew Bibles will be removed for the time being, too. We will not have paper bulletins or connection cards. Our staff is developing an electronic connection card where people can text their information to us via their cell phones. Main level restrooms will be open with attendants who will man the doors and others who will be sanitizing the surfaces throughout the morning. For the time being, we will not be offering Sunday school classes or other small groups on campus. If groups want to continue meeting via Zoom or other technology platforms, that's great, and we certainly do encourage that. The challenge is having a lot of people putting a lot of people into smaller spaces. We're simply acting on the advice of the medical experts. In all likelihood, Sunday school and small groups will not be meeting on campus until July. If things loosen up and it looks like that it would be safe to begin hosting them earlier, I promise we will certainly consider doing that. We also will be keeping some of our restrooms open and available during worship, and those will be manned, as I mentioned earlier. We'll have extra hand sanitizer available around the buildings. And while our worship leadership won't be wearing masks, it's hard to preach in a mask after all, right? We certainly understand and welcome all of you who will be wearing masks. I suspect there's a sermon illustration or two around that idea, Christians wearing masks, but I digress. But we'll be back in Jeremiah 29, Lord willing, this Sunday, hopefully doing justice to that great text and making sure we work diligently to properly understand this particular pericope of Scripture. And finally, in case you're wondering, we won't be serving coffee, water, or donuts for a while, but when we get the green light, I promise they'll be back. Let me close by sharing the memory verse for next month. I think it wonderfully encapsulates the times in which we find ourselves. It's from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. Paul writes this, So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light and momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal.